So we're on our way up to Highland Mary Lakes on this road and we ran into a traffic jam. Here we're looking at the sheep that are eventually going to make their way up and over this mountain to um, a pasture land. And we're just talking to the owner of the sheep. And it looks like they brought how many? About 1,500 sheep in their trucks today. And to manage all these sheep, sheep, <laughs> they have one guy from Peru who they're going to pay $1,000 a month to. And he has a dog, one sheep herding dog, and two guard dogs. And they pay him a thousand a month, which doesn't sound like much, but they also, um, the ranchers bring him food and radio and everything he needs, so he's well supplied. And then in the fall, they'll bring, they'll herd up all these sheep, get them in that corral that we saw um, a few minutes ago, and take them back to the lowlands for the winter. Here we are going up the Highland Mary Trail. Sky in front of us. Looks pretty good. I'll zoom out a little. Sky behind us. A little ominous. <laughs> nice job, honey. I need the camera, Mom. The rocks were definitely the same the way. It looks like a regular billy goat coming down. Well, we're on our way down from Highland Mary Lake Trail. We didn't quite make the lake. There were thunder clouds rolling in. And we were tired. And we were tired. Hi. What do you have to say about that? It's good. Anything else? You should be a newscaster. <laughs> Becky on the spot, take one. <laughs> the flowers were really beautiful. Don't forget the waterfall. And the waterfalls oh, in yes. the stream. It and was just very picturesque. Hannah had a first today. I don't know you talked about it. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. Here we are. We drove our rocking minivan up to the top of Animus Creek. Most four-wheel drives, as you can see. Most four-wheel drives. That looks suitable to drive up here. Oh, even better. Look at that one. Or the rental Jeep. But we are at a ghost town. They bought the land for a dollar. A dollar? It's known for its indoor toilet, it says. 
Gustafson. Probably good old Minnesota family that moved here. Oh, there's back. You like it? Is it? Yeah. I don't see any ghosts though. No ghosts. All right, this is a two-story one. Look at this. We're gonna video this one. We're gonna go in here and look over your mine out your window. I'm going real slow and easy. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> oh no. I figured if mommy falls through, then I shouldn't go. What if she doesn't? Maybe we should look back on here and see if a leg comes through the ceiling. At our back window. Don't step in the next hole, Anna. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta go over there. Gotta go explore the toilet. There's a beautiful, beautiful view. This is an old boarding camp for the miners. The guy I met last night said they used to stay up there through the week and then once they had all their money they'd come down to the Silverton. The porch is like, I don't know, 45 degree angle, maybe more. Look how high up that is. Here we're at the old hundred mine. Hey girls. Hey. Mark, all the same all right. Mark Twain said something along the lines of mine is big hole in the ground that you throw money into. Welcome to the old hundred. Between 1968 and 1971, Dixie Lynn spent about 11 and a half million dollars. They never found a town to pay in rock. <laughs> they did build us a nice mine turbo. <laughs> now, one of us has got to shake the steel round and round while the other one jacks the steel. Guys, find anything? Yeah. See that nice lake here, Pat? Mm -hmm. 